when you were, uh, let's say, ten, twelve years of age, you looked at somebody, they were just fine. Suddenly you became fourteen, fifteen, your intelligence got hijacked by your hormones. You look at somebody, every bump on their body looks like a world by itself. Today I would say, ninety-five percent of human energy is either invested in sex or money, yes or no? These are two small aspects of your life. One is about your survival, another is a certain aspect of your physiology, okay? It has become so big because somebody told you these two things are wrong. Telling him that girl is for you, you know, his mind is going crazy. He watches movies, these days pornographic stuff is all over the place, he's watching it on the phone. So he thinks this is what every girl wants. He is unable to think beyond that, you must understand his problem. Because we just said something is wrong and you should not think about it. If you just let it be, reproductive organs are a small part of who you are. But what should be in the reproductive organ has been very efficiently pushed up into the human head. Now sexuality is not happening in, in their bodies, it's happening in their head all the time. In this mind, if you say, something is bad, do not think about it, that will become the full-time job. If you say, don't think about this, only that they will think. People who did not understand the nature of human mind brought morality into life. So there are many reasons why one indulges in sex. For some, it is just pleasure. For some, it is a way of building this bond and companionship. Otherwise, people feel they are going away from each other. They may be just fine, but a lot of people, it is psyched in their mind that if they are not sexually involved, they are actually moving away. Not true. You can be very close to somebody and need not be involved in any physical manner, isn't it? But societies are psyching, especially in this part of the world, people are hugely psyched. If there is no sexuality, you don't really have a relationship. In fact, the word relationship, it's only… it took me some time to understand that here, if you say a relationship, you are supposed to understand it's sex-based relationship. Nothing else is a relationship. If… if I… I can have a very strong relationship with you and not be concerned about your body, isn't it? I may not be drawn to your body in any way, but I can have a very powerful relationship with you. But all those possibilities are completely discounted. A relationship means you must be in some way physically involved, man, woman or man, man, woman, woman, whatever you like. Essentially it's body-based. What kind of body is individual choices, but essentially it is body-based. This has happened because somewhere our identification in the body has gone beyond normal levels of identity. It is excessive identification with the body. That is why body-based relationships have become the crux of the society. I keep hearing these complaints all over. Some people, generally women, keep complaining their husbands are excessively physical. Some women constantly complaining, he doesn't lay a finger upon me. Whatever happens, it's a problem because it will never happen exactly the way you want it. As long as another person is involved, nothing will ever happen hundred percent the way you want it, isn't it so? Yes or no? It never will. It doesn't matter if you get married to your God, it still won't happen. As long as your way of being, your sense of pleasure and joy is dependent on other person, you will always have a complaint. Doesn't matter how wonderful the other person is. So. It is not sexuality per se which becomes the barrier, but the attachment it creates to the physicality which definitely becomes the barrier. Now I am speaking, this is a kind of energy. You are looking at me, this is a kind of energy. You are listening to me, this is a kind of energy. These are different expressions of the same life energy, isn't it? Now sexuality is also another expression of the same energy. Now one has to decide how much of his energy in which direction he wants to send it. Because after all, you are a limited amount of energy. This question is coming from certain amount of bits and pieces, the gossip that you have heard about how you could assimilate your own semen and raise it up. 
to your higher possibility, yes, it is true. At the same time, it is not because of abstinence that one does it, it is because of internalizing your energies that you do it. It is not simply that somebody is abstaining from sex and suddenly his energies are all organized and it's going up, it's not true. If your energies get organized and begin to move up, the need for sexuality may evaporate for you, but it doesn't leave you incapable, it doesn't leave you impotent, but the need is gone. It is just no more a compulsive thing. And it is not just this one thing, all compulsiveness is lost. Essentially, most of the sexuality that's happening on the planet is happening because of a certain compulsiveness, isn't it? It's a compulsive drive. It is not the sexuality which limits it, but it's the excessive identity with the physicality which limits it. If you make it too big, you will become perverted in your head. If you try to obliterate it, you will become even more perverted in your mind. One who is too identified with your physical body naturally is sex-driven because that is the highest thing that he knows. There are ways we can make you find something which is far bigger than this. Once you taste something better, I don't have to tell you give this up or give that up, it'll anyway fall off, isn't it? There are ways to do certain sadhana which is more intense than sexuality, which is more ecstatic than sexuality. On one level, if you look at it, in all dimensions of yoga, one way or the other are ultimately trying to activate the pineal because once it begins its secretion, everything about you becomes sweet and beautiful. It creates a whole inner pleasure which makes all the outer pleasures look like kindergarten stuff. That's the reason yogis are just sitting with eyes closed, not because they're against pleasure, they're against small pleasures, that's all. So the Shambhavi, one thing that's happening is, it stimulates the pineal secretion in a big way, which leaves you drenched in a certain level of sweetness throughout the day. It just leaves you in a certain state of ec ecstasy and blissfulness because the pineal gland is active. This is one aspect of your physiology which is very close to your consciousness. The rest of the physiology is about survival, but pineal gland is one aspect of your physiology which is very, very close to transcending the physical. <laughs>